So I'd like to thank the organisers for inviting me. Um, so this is a series of, of three lectures which are going to be fairly different. This first lecture is going to be mostly about derived geometry, um, but tomorrow's lecture will be mostly about perverse sheaves and um, Wednesday or Thursday's lecture will be on other stuff. Um, so, and it, the, the whole project is joint with quite a lot of people. Today's um, is based on these two papers, uh, which are joint with Oran, who is here, and also Chris Brav and Vittorio Buzzi. Um, and you can find these slides on the website if you go to the program and click on the little starry bits. Um, okay, so how I got into this project is I have for a long time been interested uh, in Donald and Thomas invariants, which are numbers which count uh, coherent sheaves on Calabian threefolds and have a bunch of interesting properties such as deformation invariants. Um, now, in order to be able to count coherent sheaves on the Calabian threefold, you need to put an appropriate geometric structure on the moduli scheme or moduli stack of such things. Um, and fairly recently, um, Tony Pantev, who is here, and Cohen, Bakke, and Vizotzi came up with a new geometric structure on moduli schemes of, or derived moduli schemes and derived moduli stacks of coherent sheaves on Calabian manifolds. Uh, which is called shifted symplectic structures. Um, and this is really the beginning of quite a long story for us. Um, we're using these, these new shifted symplectic structures to give a kind of new local description of these Calabia moduli schemes. Uh, and from there, we're able to do things like build perverse sheaves on the Calabia 3 moduli schemes and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so the talk is going to be, first of all, I'm going to tell you about um, Tony's uh, shifted symplectic schemes. You may have heard that uh, or something like this last week from Damian Clark. Um, then I'm going to tell you about our Darboux theorem for shifted symplectic drive schemes. This is going to give local models for um, Calabia moduli schemes, essentially. Uh, and then I'm going to tell you about the, the Artem stack version of this. Um, and then uh, the next two lectures will, will really be applications of these two things. Um, you know, once we know what the local models for um, Glabia moduli schemes are and how they're glued together, uh, we also find out, you know, we can do things with them, like you know, it will turn out that Glabia 3 moduli schemes are locally modeled upon critical loci, and critical loci have perverse sheaves of vanishing cycles living on them, so one of our projects is to glue together those perverse sheaves of vanishing cycles to make some kind of canonical perverse sheaf on the whole thing. Okay. Um, well, let's start off by talking a little bit about um, derived geometry. So we're going to work over an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero, K, um, which, if you like, can be the complex numbers. Um, we do need characteristic zero, I think, in order to, to use our principal reference, uh, PTVV, uh, although I guess some parts of this will work over uh, positive characteristic things as well. Anyway. Um, so our foundations are Toen and Vetsotzi's theory of derived algebraic geometry. You could probably also use the Lurie version as well if you wanted. So they give us infinity categories of derived schemes, derived K schemes, D schemes, um, and derived stacks. Uh, so for us, derived stacks are going to include derived Artem stacks. Um, so derived stacks in the Toen and Vetsotzi framework are very general. Uh, they include in particular higher stacks. What I mean by a derived Artem stack is something which is not higher. Anyway, let me give you some kind of orientation as to what a derived scheme or a derived stack is. So Grothendieck told us that schemes, you can think of them as uh, a functor from, well, algebras or rings, um, really the opposite category of that into sets. Um, so Basically, A, uh, if you have some, uh, some scheme S, you'd send uh, an algebra A to home from spec of A into S. Okay. Um, so, and if you're doing moduli spaces, uh, you define your moduli as a functor. Um, and then you'd ask, is the functor represented by a scheme? Okay. 
Now, classical stacks, you replace the right-hand side sets, uh, which is really a naught category, by groupoids. Well, so, sorry, sets are naught categories, but sets of self are one category. Groupoids are categories, but the collection of all groupoids forms a two category. Um, so, okay, so R10 stacks, you change the right-hand side from sets to groupoids. Now, if you want to go in the direction of higher stacks, then you make the right-hand side more and more complicated. So you could go for two groupoids and three groupoids. But and once you get into these higher categories, you might as well go all the way uh, and go to infinity things. So then you're into simplicial sets. So if you turn, if you make the right-hand side more and more complicated, you get into the direction of higher stacks. Now, the derived direction is when you change the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side. Um, and you can replace it by either simplicial algebras or um, what, what, um, an alternative model, which I prefer, is to think in, in terms of um, commutative differential graded algebras, CDGAs, uh, in non-positive degrees. Okay, so... Um, as so what these derived stacks are, they're functors from simplicial things into simplicial sets, uh, or vice versa. Uh, anyway, uh, but if you're like me, you're probably still th saying, well, yes, but what is it? Because um, this doesn't really give you any geometric... Uh, I suggest you just let the... <coughs> uh, light do what they want. Um, uh, because that doesn't really give you any kind of geometric intuition as to what they're like. Um, and so I would say that the local model for a, a scheme is um, a differential graded algebra, a commutative differential graded algebra, rather than algebra. Um, and the nice versions of these, you can think about as really being something like graded manifolds. Um, they have a kind of a smooth thing in degree zero, and then the negative degree things you can think about as vector bundles, graded in negative degrees. Um, and then D is like some kind of vector field on that graded manifold. Um, but a kind of characteristic of derived geometry is that, okay, you can give reasonably explicit local models for things, but the question of how these local models should be glued together becomes a lot more subtle because um, you're doing this, you know, they're glued together not by equivalences, but by um, kind of quasi-isomorphisms of some kind. Okay, but anyway, if we're only interested in giving nice local models rather than how the local models get, get glued together, we're going, to, we're going to be able to be reasonably explicit. That's what these things are. Okay, right. So, in this context of derived algebraic geometry, um, Pantev, Toen, Bakke, and Vitsotsi, hereafter PTDV, uh, defined a notion of uh, shifted symplectic structure, shifted by an integer k, on a drive scheme or a drive stack uh, for some integer. This is a complicated thing, but here's the basic idea. So, in derived geometry, and the most basic things, in derived categories, you replace sheaves or vector bundles by complexes. Okay? So, if we think about our derived stack X as being something like a generalization of a manifold, manifolds have tangent bundles and cotangent bundles, um, which are vector bundles. Uh, the cotangent complex of a derived stack is a complex rather than a vector bundle, so a kind of derived analog of a vector bundle. Um, and for the kind of stacks we're considering, this will always be a perfect complex. So it's, um, it can be built out of vector bundles in some fixed range of degrees. So this is an element of the derived category of quasi coherent sheaves on X. Uh, you can take its exterior powers, LP of LX, which are kind of complexes of P forms. Um, so we have a Durham differential, D Durham, going from the complex of P forms into the complex of P plus 1 forms. Uh, so this is a morphism of, morphism of complexes, although not a morphism of OX modules because it's, it's not OX linear, it satisfies Leibniz relation. Okay, but now we've really got two differentials, two Ds, because there's a Durham differential taking P forms to P plus 1 forms, but the P, the P forms themselves are a complex, complexes of sheaves. So it has an internal differential, which I'm just going to write as D, 
going from the kth graded piece of the p-forms into the k plus 1th graded piece of the p-forms. Um, and these two differentials satisfy d squared is d dirham squared uh, is 0, and d of dirham plus d dirham of d is 0. Okay? Uh, actually, I lied about that sign, but the signs will come out in the wash at the end. Um, okay? So, a p-form of degree k on x uh, for an integer k is basically a cohomology class uh, in h to the k of the p-forms, the complex p-forms with the internal differential d. Um, so sometimes we talk about p-forms as a cohomology class in square brackets. Sometimes we talk about it as a, an actual um, cochain, omega zero. Um, on the other hand, a closed p-form of degree k is a more complicated gadget. Um, it's in some kind of it's in the cohomology of a, a negative cyclic cohomology uh, complex, basically. So we take the direct sum from i is zero up to infinity of the p plus i forms shifted by i um, with a differential d plus d dirham on that. So the d uh, increases uh, this number, really, whereas the d dirham increases that number. Um, and so they both increase the, that number by one. Um, so this, this thing forms a, a complex. This is a fairly natural thing to do from the point of view of periodic cyclic, negative cyclic, cohomology, Hochschild cohomology type things. Um, it's a well-known construction of homological algebra. Um, there's a projection from uh, this cohomology group to the notion of p-forms, uh, where you take uh, this kind of series of things. Uh, it, it, yeah, it should be said that all of these things are allowed to be non-zero. The, the series doesn't become, doesn't have become zero at some point. Um, so a closed p-form is a, a series of kind of, well, in a sense you have a p-form and then a p plus one form which is correcting the p-form, a p plus two form which is correcting the p plus one form, and so on, a kind of infinite series. Um, there's a projection from p closed p-forms to p-forms which just takes this series to its first term. Um, okay. So, therefore, something which should maybe uh, counterintuitive to differential geometers like me is that closed p-forms are not special examples of p-forms. It's not a, a closed p-form. It's not a p-form with an extra satisfying condition of being closed, but it's a p-form with an extra structure. It's a p-form omega zero with a bunch of extra data omega one, omega two, and so on, satisfying some conditions. So the projection from closed p-forms to p-forms. Uh, can be neither injective nor surjective. Okay. Um, so now we know what we mean by a form and a closed form on a drive stack. Uh, now let's, we're aiming to, to define the idea of symplectic structures, which of course are closed uh, form which is non-degenerate. So let's talk about non-degenerate two forms. So let's take omega zero to be a two form uh, of some integer degree k on x then uh, this induces a morphism from the tangent complex, Tx, into the cotangent complex, Lx, shifted by k. So basically, this is the tangent bundle of the stack. This is the cotangent bundle of the stack. But because this is a degree k cohomology class rather than degree zero cohomology case, you get class, you get a shift here of k. So Tx is just the, the dual um, complex to Lx. And we call um, a two-form non-degenerate uh, if this morphism of complexes is a quasi-isomorphism, that is, it's isomorphism on cohomology. Okay, now, if X is a derived scheme, rather than a derived stack, um, then it's built out of CDGAs, which live in non-positive degrees, degree zero, minus one, and so on, and the cotangent complex also lives in non-positive degrees. Um, so the degree zero part is really the, the kind of cotangent space or cotangent sheaf of the classical uh, stack and then degree minus one is where the obstructions live, degree minus two is where the kind of relations on obstructions live and so on. Um, dually, the tangent complex lives, is a complex which lives in degree zero, one up to infinity. Um, so therefore, omega zero can, between Tx and Lx shifted by K, this can be a quasi-isomorphism if and only if K is less than equal to zero, well, unless is actually a point, and both of these are zero. Um, and then Lx have to live, Lx have to live in degrees k up to zero, 
and Tx has to live in degree 0 up to minus k because you're, well, you, you kind of shift this up by k and you compare it to this and you see uh, that basically these, the tangent complex, the cotangent complex have to be perfect uh, in these ranges of degrees um, if you're going to be shifted symplectic. Um, in a special case, k is 0, um, then the cotangent complex and the tangent complex live in degree 0 only and that basically forces x to be smooth. Okay, um, so x is a smooth classical scheme. If k is minus 1, then um, the cotangent complex of x lives in degrees minus 1 and 0. Um, that's what's called quasi-smooth. Quasi-smooth ski derived schemes are important because they're the things for which one can form virtual cycles. Um, if you're familiar with the, the Berendt and Fantecci um, construction of virtual cycles in algebraic geometry, what you get is a classical scheme together with an instruction theory, which is a complex living in degrees minus 1 up to 0, uh, as in the quasi-smooth case, um, and mapping to the cotangent complex of the classical scheme. Um, and the way you get those things out of derived geometry is that the Berendt and Fantecci obstruction um, theory is actually the cotangent complex of the drive scheme, together with a map to the cotangent complex of the classical scheme. Okay. Um, so the k is minus 1 case is also important in things to do with kind of counting invariants. Um, okay, so a closed two form of degree k on x is now called a k-shifted symplectic structure uh, if the associated two form, the omega 0, is a non-degenerate two form. Um, so this, you know, once you've got your head around some symplectic, some um, derived geometry, this, this is a, a reasonably canonical notion of symplectic structure in derived algebraic geometry. Okay, so Tony and his friends prove that if Y is a Klar Biao manifold over our field K and M is a derived moduli scheme or moduli stack of coherent sheaves on Y or of complexes of coherent sheaves on Y in the derived band derived category, um, then M has a natural shifted shift symplectic structure omega and the shift is 2 minus M. Um, so, in particular, Calabia threefolds are going to give minus one shifted symplectic uh, derived schemes or stacks. Um, and the Calabia three case is a case I'm particularly interested in. Um, Calabia twofolds give you naught shifted symplectic, which is basically classical. Um, so, that's one reason why moduli schemes of sheaves on K3 surfaces tend to be algebraic symplectic um, schemes. Okay, so. Here's a way of thinking about why this is true um, in terms of Sir duality in the Club Biao context. So uh, you can understand the associated non degenerate two form omega um, on the moduli stack of coherent sheaves in terms of Sir duality. So if at a point E in M, where I'm now thinking about E as some particular coherent sheaf on my Club Y, uh, it turns out that the cohomology, the, the ith cohomology sheaf of the tangent complex at E is x to the i plus 1 of EE. So in i equals 0, we get x1 of EE, which is the tangent space to the moduli scheme. Um, it's uh, when i equals, yeah. Um, and the h to the i of the cotangent complex at E is x to the 1 minus i of EE star, because that's just dual to this. So the Calabi Yau condition uh, tells us that x to the i of E, e is isomorphic to x to the m minus i of E, e star. So on a general uh, smooth projective variety, you'd have a tensor of the canonical bundle in the right hand side term here. But because we're Calabi Yau, and the Calabi Yau condition really means that the canonical bundle is trivial, so therefore this, the tensor canonical bundle term drops out. Um, okay, so if you compare this thing to these two equations, we see that um, Calabi-Yau tells us that the i minus warmth cohomology sheaf of the tangent bundle uh, at E is isomorphic to the i minus warmth cohomology sheaf of the cotangent bundle of M shifted by 2 minus M at E. And this is just the cohomology at E of this quasi isomorphism from Tm to Lm shifted by 2 minus M. So we can see that where the 2 minus M comes from, it's a combination of. Uh, the dimension m and the fact that you get these shifts by 1 in the um, isomorphisms 
uh, between the cohomology and the X groups. Okay. Um, next, let's talk about Lagrangians and Lagrangian sections. Um, if X and omega is a K-shifted symplectic derived schemal stack, uh, Tony and his friends define a notion of a Lagrangian in X. Uh, so this is a morphism, I, going from L into X, of derived schemes or stacks. It doesn't have to be an embedding. L could actually be quite a lot bigger than X, for instance. Um, together with a homotopy, I star of omega uh, being equivalent to zero, which satisfies a non-degeneracy condition, um, which then implies that TL is equivalent to the relative cotangent complex of X uh, shifted by K minus one. Um, and this homotopy is actually a piece of important piece of data. And in the classical sense, you just say, well, a Lagrangian is something of the right dimension, such that the pullback of omega is equal to zero. But um, in this derived context, uh, the, you, it's, you don't just want these two things to be equal. There's a path between them, and the choice of path matters. So it could be that that's zero and that's zero, but the homotopy you choose between them is some non-trivial path, um, and it's the path itself that satisfies the non-degeneracy condition. Um, that's one of these derived uh, geometry things. Okay. Um, they also say that if L and M are Lagrangians in X, where X is K-shifted, then the homotopy fiber product, L cross over XM, has a natural K minus 1 shifted symplectic structure. Okay. So a nice thing in this derived symplectic world is that you can go between different levels of symplecticness. You can go from um, K-shifted symplectic things to K minus 1 shifted symplectic, and of course then you can take even more fiber products and go to K minus 2 shifted symplectic and so on. Um, the whole uh, kind of tower of uh, symplectic things and Lagrangian things uh, is all kind of connected in interesting ways. Okay, so if S and omega is a classical smooth symplectic scheme, um, then it is naught shifted symplectic derived scheme in the sense of um, PTVV. And if you have classical smooth Lagrangian subschemes, uh, then they are Lagrangians in the PTVV sense. And therefore, the, the Lagrangian intersection, L intersect M uh, in S, as a derived uh, intersectional fiber product, is a minus one shifted symplectic derived scheme. Yeah? Yeah. The geometrical options which also be perfect for the sheet of the original space, but it's magical. Yeah. Is there in the derived geometry also a geometrical thing corresponding to L for in certain cases? I'm not sure I make the distinction. And that the are you you're, you're distinguishing between a vector bundle and its sheaf of sections. Right. I and take it. Here we have the, the, the yeah. Well, uh, mm -hmm. right in the classical terms, we can have think of the sheaf of, you know, yeah. differentials of degree one versus the cotangent bundles, and, and they're related by the obvious. I, I think in some ways tangent bundles are better than cotangent bundles, because um, I mean, if you've got a singular scheme, then somehow the, the, the tangent bundle still makes sense. Um, it's, you know, well, if you take a kind of spec of direct sum over I um, of, um, well, S to the I of T star of X, as it were. This is somehow TX. Um, and I think uh, probably derived schemes do have kind of derived tangent bundles as, you know, as, actual, as actual spaces. Um, no. Um, okay, that's what I do. Okay, so derived Lagrange, Lagrangian intersections are minus one shifted symplectic things. So this whole story as a kind of byproduct is going to have something to say about intersections of Lagrangians. It's worth also saying that um, PTVV's notion of Lagrangians in a classical symplectic thing are actually more general than classical smooth Lagrangians. There's also an interesting notion of derived Lagrangian in a classical symplectic thing, which nice thing to study. Uh, basically, they correspond to the kind of thing you get if you compositions of Lagrangian correspondences 
um, but you don't require the Lagrangian correspondences to intersect transversely. If you're a subclave geometry, that might mean something to you. Okay, so some examples of Lagrangians. If you take a shifted symplectic, a case of symplectic things, and some Lagrange and some collection of Lagrangians in there, then Oren um, shows that the multiple fiber product of D Lagrangians mapping into the kind of product of pairwise intersections around a, a kind of cyclic, you know, L1 cross L2 plus L2 cross L2 all the way up to L D minus 1 cross LD, and then finally LD cross L1. Um, so each of these are K minus 1 shifted symplectic, um, and this whole thing is Lagrangian in that. Um, so this is relevant to defining, so that this is to do with kind of K-gons, if you like. This is relevant to defining Fukuya categories of complex symplectic manifolds, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about tomorrow. Uh, these are the kind of things you would want to, to define the, the kind of mu d part of the A-infinity structure, I think. Um, okay, another example. If you take a Calabier manifold, then you have a drive moduli stack of coherent sheaves, or complex on it, which is 2 minus m shifted symplectic. Um, so we expect, so Oren, I think, knows how to prove this, provided Bertrand gets his arse in deer and um, proves the theorem he's promised to prove. Then the complex of exact sequences or of distinguished triangles mapping to three copies of the moduli stack uh, of objects by the obvious three projections, this should be Lagrangian as well. Um, uh, and I believe this will be relevant to defining uh, what's called cohomological Hall algebras in the sense of Conservation and Sobermann uh, for Calabian threefolds. Okay, so now I can tell you um, our main theorem in the, the scheme case. So this is due to Chris Brav, Victoria, and myself. Um, so let's suppose we have a K-shifted symplectic drive scheme where K is now strictly negative. Uh, okay? The theorem would make sense in the case K equals zero, but it's actually false. Okay? In the case K equals zero, uh, this will be giving you a Darboux theorem, uh, which is true for real symplectic things and complex symplectic things, but actually the Darboux theorem in the algebraic category for algebraic symplectic manifolds is false. Anyway, so I do, I do require K to be strictly negative. Um, the statement is simplest if K is not 2 mod 4. Uh, in that case, uh, each X in big X has a risky open neighborhood um, Y uh, equivalent to spec of A, uh, where A and D is and it has commutative differential graded algebra of a very explicit form. Um, well, for first approximation, it's just generated by graded variables x minus i and y, um, where the x's are graded for 0 down to minus k by 2, and the y's are graded for minus k by 2 down to k, or minus k. Uh, yeah. um, and then omega is... Well, it has an omega zero, which is this obvious Darboux thing, and then all of the remaining terms are actually zero. Um, the top index here is the graded degree of the variables, and omega zero is just the sum of dy's wedge dx's. So the, the y's and the x's are dual variables in complementary degrees. The degrees always add up to k, um, and we just have this kind of usual form. If this wasn't graded, this would be the usual Darboux theorem in... Um, ordinary symplectic geometry. Also, okay, so that, this tells you what A is as a graded algebra, but it also has a differential D, um, taking a graded piece to graded piece plus one. Um, and this differential is given by a Poisson bracket with respect to the inverse of omega zero um, with some Hamiltonian function H in A of degree K plus one. Okay, um, in the case K is two mod four, there's two statements. Um, well, in an etal local, if we work etal locally, we can write omega like this, basically. Well, it's not quite true, but we can write omega zero in a way which is constant in coordinates. Uh, if you want to do it risky locally, we have a, a slight problem, which is that uh, in the middle degree, uh, you have to allow some functions, um, some invertible functions. Um, basically, in the KS2 mod 4 case, uh, you have the omega is actually symmetric in the middle degree variables, the, the variables of, of degree k over 2, and um, something you can't do is, uh, kind of risky locally, is standardize um, 
uh, symmetric qu you know, quadratic forms. Um, because to do that, you have to be allowed to take, take square roots, and that's an atile local operation. If we're allowed to take square roots, then we can standardize over here again. Okay, so let's just write out what this looks like, for example, in the case uh, in the case k is minus 3, uh, so that's the Calabi out 5 case. Then we have variables x10 up to x d0, x1 minus 1 up to x d1 minus 1, and then y1 minus 2 up to y d1 minus 2, y1 minus 3 up to y d0 minus 3. So these variables are dual. And um, omega is the sum of a variety of dx i0 wedge dy i minus 3 plus the sum over, uh, sorry, dy is wedge dx is, uh, whatever, dy i minus 2 wedge dx i minus 1. Um, so in fact, you kind of only need to know the top half of this because the y's are just dual and the relations seen in the standard. Um, so in this case, h is of degree k plus 1, where k is minus 3. So h will be linear in the y minus 2s or quadratic in the x minus 1s and then arbitrary functions of the x zeros. Okay. So actually, there's a slight lie here. Um, in fact, a is a smooth algebra in degree 0. Um, and the x, i, zeros are atal coordinates on that but A may not be generated by the xi zeros. But once you fix A0, then A is freely generated in negative degrees by the negative generators. Okay, so that's what our... Um, this tells us what, basically, what shifted symplectic derived schemes look like um, in a very explicit way, which is quite nice to calculate with. So the sketch proof, um, we take x and omega k shifted symplectic um, then Lx lives in degrees k up to 0. So we first show that we can build as risky open y in x uh, around our chosen point little x equivalent to spec of A where A is a CGGA over k with A0 a smooth k algebra uh, A is freely generated in negative degrees over A0 by some finite number of graded variables x's and y's um, and we take the dimension of the smooth algebra and the number of generators be minimal at x. So basically, the number of these things are all um, dimensions of the cohomology sheaves of Lx at point x. Okay, so this much is true for arbitrary finitely presented um, shifted uh, derived schemes without any symplectic assumption. Then, using some theorems about periodic cyclic homology, we, can, we show that on y, uh, this kind of cohomology class omega is equivalent in the cohomology of the, the rather complicated complex I showed you, something of the form omega zero and then everything else zero, where omega zero is a two form of degree k, which is closed under both differentials. Now, because we've chosen this to be minimal at the point x, um, it gives you crazy isomorphisms on cohomology, but actually the cohomology is isomorphic to the variables you've got, uh, we see that actually omega zero is strictly non-degenerate near x, so you can actually invert it. What we use that for is that we basically we change variables in, in the y's, leave the x's as they are, change variables in the y's to make omega basically the identity matrix between x's and y's. Um, and so then you can take omega zero to be of that form. And then finally, we show that the diff so Thus far, we've managed to standardize the algebra as a graded algebra and the symplectic form. What's left is to understand the differential d in A. Uh, and then we see that d is a symplectic vector field and it integrates to a Hamiltonian function h. Okay. Um, so, in a particular case, k equals minus 1. The Hamiltonian h in the theorem has degree 0, so it's a function of the degree 0 variables only. Um, and it reduces to corollary 
which says that if x and omega is a minus one shifted symplectic drive scheme, then it's Zariski locally equivalent to a derived critical locus, the critical locus of a regular function h on a smooth classical K scheme u. Um, so in particular, the classical K scheme uh, x, the classical truncation of bold x, is Zariski locally isomorphic to a classical critical locus, crit of h going from u into a1. So this is, uh, is really a very strong result. Um, it, it is as strong as I was expecting. Um, and we, we've been trying to prove things like this for kind of Calabi-R3 moduli schemes for some time, and we've been thinking in terms of critical loci of formal power theories and things like that. But to be able to show that this thing is so risky locally, and not in any weaker topology, um, a critical locus of a function on a smooth scheme, is, this is about as strong as you could get. Um, I can't imagine a stronger result than this, I think. Um, okay. And combining this with the results from PTVV, which I told you about before, you get some consequences in class, just classical algebraic geometry. So um, Dan Fried told me that I'd drunk the Kool-Aid of derived geometry. Um, what I think he may have meant is that people that go into derived geometry tend not to come back out again. They just say they're proving results about derived algebraic things which nobody else can understand. Uh, anyway, this is not an example of that. Uh, here we're using derived geometry to prove something about strictly classical um, moduli problems, and this is actually, a, you know, this is something I wanted to know um, years ago uh, before I started thinking about derived uh, schemes. Anyway, so the corollary tells us that if Y is a Calabi R3 fold over K, and M is a classical moduli scheme with coherent sheaves, or a complex with coherent sheaves on Y, then M is risky locally isomorphic to the critical locus, crit of H going from U into A1, of a regular function H on a smooth scheme U. So once again, this is really very strong. Um, much stronger than I would have expected to be able to prove. So the way we prove this is we just note that the classical scheme M is the classical translation of a derived moduli scheme, bold M. Uh, and PTVV tells us that bold M is minus one shifted symplectic. Um, and then we apply the previous corollary. Okay, so uh, together with postdoc in and song, I did prove a complex analy analytic analog of this uh, for moduli of coherent sheaves on complex Calabi R3 folds um, as part of uh, a monograph I wrote on Donaldson Thomas invariance. Um, and we needed to know this in order to prove something about, in order to prove wall crossing formally for Donaldson Thomas invariance. Um, so, an analogous result for moduli of complexes, again over C, was claimed by Berendt and Ezra. I think I've seen Ezra walking around. Uh, so, Ezra can tell you um, how he proved that. Uh, but as far as I know, the paper hasn't actually appeared yet. Um, but the proof of this is wholly algebraic, algebraic geometric, whereas these two things were uh, proved, I think, using analytic methods and were only, uh, at best, we're going to tell you that over C, you get the critical locus of a holomorphic function on a complex manifold rather than an algebraic function on an algebraic complex manifold. Okay. Um, so, also, because intersections of algebraic Lagrangians are minus one shifted symplectic, we can deduce... Another corollary, that if S and omega is a classical smooth symplectic scheme and L and M are smooth algebraic Lagrangians, um, then the intersection L cap M as a K subscheme of S is the risky locally isomorphic to the critical locus crit H from U into A1 of a regular function H on a smooth scheme U. Okay, now, if we knew the Darboux theorem in algebraic geometry, which we don't because it's false, this would be easy because we could say, well, S looks locally like the cotangent bundle of L, and then M in that cotangent bundle will be the graph of a closed one form or an exact one form, um, and so M would be the graph of D of some function H, um, and then L intersect M would be critical locus of H. So if we had a Darboux theorem or a Lagrangian neighborhood theorem, we could prove this corollary easily, but um, in classical algebraic symplectic geometry, we don't have such a Darboux theorem, so this is not obvious. I, I guess you could probably prove this anyway. Without resorting to derived algebraic geometry. So, yeah, sorry? Uh, it's just a minor question again. Uh, so, uh, can you do the boot theory around the cloud cover? In, in, in algebraic uh, I don't think so, no. Um, and it, it, well, so is it my meaning clear? Yeah, well, and it, it, you can't integrate closed one, close one forms even after a tile cover. And think about a closed one form on a Riemann surface. That, uh, 
even if you take an, a, an atoll cover, it remains close but not exact. Yeah, if you if you if you work in, try to work in some kind of formal, yeah, if you work formally, then it's okay. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm the, you can probably Google that, but yeah. I don't know. I, I imagine it would work over, over a base of some kind, um, but I haven't thought too hard about that. Okay, where are we going next? Um, yep. Yes. Well, the, yeah, and yes, but that, that, that's how we prove it. Um, yeah, the, so the derived intersection is minus one shifted symplectic, so therefore it is a derived critical locus. Um, and then this is just a classical truncation of that statement. Okay, so for minus two shifted symplectic, um, you can work out what our Darboux theorem tells us. Um, and we get the risky local models uh, depending upon the following data. So firstly, a smooth K scheme U. This is spec of a0, the zeroth degree part in our gra graded uh, algebra. Secondly, an algebraic vector bundle E over U. This is really the, the minus one dimension, or well, the generators of the minus one dimensional part of our, uh, or degraded part of our CGGA. Um, a section S in H0 of E, that's really D from the minus one part to the zero part. Okay, so E is perhaps the dual of the minus one part. Um, and a non-degenerate quadratic form, Q on E, with Q of S, S is zero. So Q is the incarnation of the symplectic form, omega, uh, on the degree minus one part with itself. Um, so Q is non-degenerate, and the section S is null with respect to it. So then the underlying classical case scheme of X is locally S inverse of zero, contained in U. And the virtual dimension of X is twice the dimension of U, minus the rank of E. So the two might be a little bit surprising there. Um, the cotangent complex of X is given by T star of U in degree zero. You expected that. E star in degree minus one. Perhaps you expected that too. With a DS, nothing there. Uh, but then in degree minus two, this is kind of relations on relations, we have a copy of TU. And that map here is Q composed to the S. And this, well, this is all restricted to the classical scheme. This composes to zero you can tell by taking the second derivative of this equation here, Q of S, S is zero, and then reducing modulo S. So I'll use this on, in the third lecture uh, to tell you how to define Donaldson Thomas style invariants which count coherent sheaves on Calabiao fourfolds. So um, this is the beginning of a rather pretty story. Okay, next let's talk briefly about how to extend all of this to um, shifted symplectic derived R-time stacks. So this is a paper um, joint with Oren and Victoria and Chris. So we extend everything I've told you so far from derived schemes to derived Artan stacks. Okay? So derived Artan stacks are not as general as general derived stacks. So we call a derived art stack X a derived Artan stack uh, if it is one geometric uh, and the, associ the associated classical stack, which has to be, a, be allowed to be a higher stack, so the classical truncation of X is one truncated, um, all in the term in the sense. So what this really means is that the cotangent complex Lx lives in degrees minus infinity up to one. It doesn't go above one. Uh, and x, the, 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 the classical truncation of x, is an ordinary classical Artan stack. In particular, it's not a higher stack. Okay? So I don't like higher things because I don't understand what they look like. Um, so a derived Artan stack x admits a smooth atlas phi from u into x, where u is a derived scheme. Um, and one way to get such derived things is, is, is if 
Y is a smooth projection scheme, and M is a drive modular stack of coherent sheaves, F on Y, or of complexes, big F in uh, the coherent sheaves, such that there are no negative X between F and itself, then M is a drive data on stack. So basically, the negative X, X less than zero of F, F, would end up in the comp cotangent complex in degrees greater than one. So X minus one would end up in degree two and so on. So saying I want no negative X between F and itself means that I want the cotangent complex of LX to be truncated at degree one, not to, not to go off into degree two and higher, and that's, what I, that's really what um, being a derived Artem stack means to me. Okay, so that's my condition. Um, so then the theorem says that if you have a K-shifted symplectic derived Artem stack for K strictly negative and a point in X, then, um, well, this is a bit complicated, uh, basically U is a smooth atlas for X with a map phi from U into X. Um, I can give you a, a, a kind of a standard form for you um, in terms of spec of A for A some uh, CDGA. Um, now, U itself is not shifted symplectic, okay, because um, if you pull back the symplectic form from here to here, it will be, non it will be degenerate in the directions of the projection phi, essentially. Um, however, there's a way of truncating U to another drier scheme V, such that um, V is shifted symplectic, so V is now a K-shifted symplectic uh, derived scheme with a symplectic form omega B, and um, the pullback of omega B to U is equivalent to the pullback of omega X to U under the two natural maps. Um, and, okay, so the relative cotangent complex of U over V is the relative tangent complex of U over X shifted by one minus K, and U and V are isomorphic as classical schemes. Okay, so that's a, a bit much to take in, perhaps. Um, so, anyway, um, so you know, roughly what's going on, because it's a stack, it's, it's not so easy to give local models of stacks, really, not so risky locally, anyway. Um, and even for classical r stacks. Uh, but we can give standard models for smooth atlases. Um, so, given any smooth atlas, five mu into x, essentially arbitrary, um, you can write u is spec of A, uh, it's risky locally on u, um, and we can also give local models for the pullback phi star omega x. So you can think about five mu into x as an open neighbourhood of u in the smooth of p in the smooth topology rather than the risky topology. Okay, but this atlas is not shifted symplectic because although the pullback is a closed form, it's not non-degenerate but you can modify it um, by kind of killing the lowest degree generators. So um, U is spec A, where A has generators in degrees 0, minus 1, down to minus K minus 1. If you just forget the generators in degree minus K minus 1 uh, and take B to be the um, things generated down to degree minus K, then you get something which is shifted symplectic. Okay, so then we get a shifted symplectic drive scheme. Um, okay, so an example in which this happens is a kind of symplectic quotient. So let's pretend that V is uh, a shifted symplectic scheme with a, an algebraic group action, G on it, and then some moment map, mu, which now is of degree K. Um, then you could take U to be mu inverse of zero and X to be mu inverse of zero over G. So if you're familiar with symplectic quotients or Kähler quotients, this will be a fairly familiar kind of story. And there's quite a nice paper on this by Pavel Safranov um, telling you how that works. Okay. Um, so in the minus one shifted symplectic case, this tells us that um, classical r time stacks of a minus one shifted symplectic stack uh, has smooth atlases which are locally critical loci um, in the classical sense. So the reason this we, we don't need a U and a V in this case is because the U and the V in my previous theorem actually have cl isomorphic classical drive stacks because the difference is in uh, degrees minus one and lower, minus two and lower actually in this case. Uh, so for moduli stacks of coherent sheaves on um, uh, Calabi-I threefolds, again we have um, 
uh, if M is a modular stack of coherent sheaves or of complexes uh, with no negative X, then our theorem tells you that M locally emits smooth atlases phi from U into X such that U is a critical locus of a regular function on a smooth scheme. And essentially, any smooth atlas, I, I don't, there's not anything special about this smooth atlas, any smooth atlas ought to be risky locally a critical locus. I think. Um, and again, uh, I proved a holomorphic version of this a long time ago. Um, Kai Berendt and Ezra Gexler um, probably also proved something ab uh, about complexes, but I'm not quite sure what that statement was. Um, so my student, Vittorio Busi, well, is, has in fact finished proving uh, the Berendt function identities uh, in Nelson Thomas theory using this, uh, this result. And so that in particular tells us that we can extend um, wall crossing formulae uh, for Donaldson Thomas invariants to other fields of characteristic zero. Okay, so um, 